The aging process is part of life and it starts approximately at the age of 30 years. The aging process is a complex process and to be fully understood it is necessary to consider psychological, social, physical and the cultural background of people. Consequently, developing interventions for an active and healthy aging process necessitates the multidimensional, holistic, cell-to-society approach for future actions across Europe. In general, the aging process does not lead to an overall decreased functioning. However, it's important to notice that aging diminishes the individual resilience and the capacity to manage stress. Various body systems lose their functional capacity on cellular, on a tissue and organism level at different rates. This affects their capability to regulate hemostasis in the human body. Following clinical signs and changes in functional capacity need closer consideration when dealing with older people in daily clinical practice. Low-grade chronic inflammation as measured in serum, fluctuation in blood pressure, glycemic control, platelet activation, poor energy metabolism, obesity, cardio and cerebrovascular lesions, decline of respiratory, musculoskeletal, cognitive and psychological function. Chronic low-grade inflammation is often combined with a compromised metabolic health, changes of the functionality of the gut microbiome and chronic infections. It has also been demonstrated as risk factor for chronic kidney disease, diabetes, cancer, dementia, depression, osteoporosis and sarcopenia. Biologists studying the aging process on a cellular level and in animal models have made some hallmark observations associated with the aging phenotype in humans. The most relevant hallmark processes related on a cellular level are as follows. Cellular senescence, changes in serum factors, stem cell exhaustion, proteostasis, clearing, of damaged proteins, nutrient sensing, meaning cellular response to nutrient, and mitochondrial dysfunction for energy hemostasis in general. These causalities of the physiology of aging have especially been studied in animal models. Also in human, especially in long living families, genetic research on aging has been performed. It is the aim of this human genetic research to identify factors that positively influence the aging process and enables the people to maintain their individual resilience and also to look for risk factors that modulate age-related diseases up to old age. Genetic studies in humans have already identified genes that may be related to age-related diseases such as dementia, cardiovascular disease, diabetes and others, but they were also able to connect gene development with risk factors associated with age-related diseases such as arterial hypertension, high blood glucose, high blood cholesterol or bone mineral density. Two lines of research approach strongly suggest that the compression of the time of disease and the severity of disease during aging is physiologically feasible. One is the study of the long life and compression of late life morbidity in centenarian studies. The other one is using the aging process across yeast, nematode worms, fruit flies and up to mice to test aging hypotheses. Both strands of research deliver results that are remarkably malleable and demonstrate similar aging mechanisms. As could be shown in those different research approaches, genetic, environmental and pharmacological approaches are able to extend life 
and to compress the lens and severity of diseases associated with the aging process.